Hey guys, welcome back to AM Live. Make sure as you're coming in, you're stating what you're thankful for. We're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and his courts with praise. As you notice, probably uh, the name of the channel has changed to AM Live. Uh, Biname helped me pick the name, and I think it's really great. When I am speaking with you, it's going to be in the AM in the morning. Uh, so that's why we picked the name. And as soon as possible, I'm going to be going live again. Thanks to you who are subscribing in droves to my channel. I really appreciate it. And as soon as we hit a thousand subscribers, I'm no longer going to be recording and posting to the channel. It's going to be all live stream. So thank you so much, guys. Make sure you are letting your friends know about the channel, that you're subscribing. Share this video. Share the channel with your friends. Like the videos. Comment. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing really off the ground so that we can... Have, uh, have that thousand subscribers and go live and bring some encouragement. That's my goal for the channel is that I can just encourage you guys with my thoughts from the word from scripture. It's nothing uh, philosophical really or too in depth. Just my thoughts on what I'm seeing in scripture and sharing those with you and wanting to be a blessing in your lives, wanting to encourage you in your life. Okay, I wanna talk to you today about two characters in the Bible that stand out and I'll show you why they stand out to me. Let's go to Joshua. I've been listening through, you know, beginning at the beginning of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, then Joshua. And so in Joshua, they were dividing up the tribes. And in Joshua 14, there's something that struck me that I hadn't really paid much attention to before. And I want to take you there and let's have a look at it. So the land is being divided among the tribes. Now Moses couldn't go in, Aaron couldn't go in, and a whole bunch of people from the nation of Israel couldn't go into the land because of their disobedience to God. So they were right there ready to go in, and because they grumbled and complained and didn't, didn't go in like the Lord said, they weren't allowed to go in at that time at all, and they had to go back out into the wilderness for 40 years until that generation died off. The only two that got to go in were Joshua and Caleb because when they were sent out, they declared a good report of the Lord of the land and said, let's go in. The Lord will give the land into our hands. We can surely do it. While the other 10 spies who were sent out gave a bad report and said, we can't. There's giants. We won't be able to do it. Okay? And then in verse 6, this is interesting. Listen to this. Listen to this part here talking about Caleb. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren, nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, wholly followed the Lord my God. And Caleb said, And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, the giants, there were giants in the land, the Anakim, and that these cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Okay. Listen to this phrase here. I, I've always kind of passed over this, okay, this little phrase, but listen to it and see what you notice about the wording there. Give me this mountain which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. What does that sound like? Okay, the, for the first time when I read that, I all of a sudden thought of Jonathan. You remember Jonathan and David, Jonathan the son of Saul. Now this happened before Jonathan. This was before, but the wording there struck me because I remember Jonathan saying the same thing when he went with his armor bearer and took on this, this encampment of Philistines. And so, I mean, 
Let's go there. Let's go to Samuel. It's 1 Samuel 14. Oh, I don't want to lose my place in Joshua. 1 Samuel 14. Interestingly, interestingly enough, 14 and 14. Chapter 14 and chapter 14. Okay. Uh, now it happened one day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines garrison that is on the other side. But he did not tell his father. And Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Ahijah, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the Lord's priest, and Shiloh was wearing an ephod, but people did not know that Jonathan had gone. Between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other. And the name of it was Bozes, the name of the other, Sena. The front one faced northward opposite Michmash, and the other southward opposite Gibeah. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised Philistines. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. That phrase, for some reason, popped out to me when I read about Caleb, and I remembered what Jonathan said. It may be. It may be that the Lord will work for us. Go back to Caleb. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. That, so the phrase is kind of strange, right? There's, it seems like there's not a, an, an overpowering amount of confidence there. It may be. But I think there's something to be said about the quiet confidence of Caleb and of Jonathan in these instances. Because some people, I don't know if you, when you think about Caleb and you think about Jonathan, you kind of think about their counterpart. So Caleb's counterpart would be Joshua, right? They were the two of the 12 spies that when they went out, they came back with a good report. The other 10 didn't. So it was Joshua and Caleb who were allowed to go into the land. It's interesting because Joshua and Caleb would have been 40 years older than anyone else who entered the land of Canaan because they were the only two in their generation that got to go in because they declared a good report from the Lord on the land. So you think of Joshua because he was with Moses all the time. We always think of Joshua as more prominent, right? Caleb was there. He was a, he was a man of God. He wholly served God. He served him fully, but he wasn't in the spotlight quite as much. But it's interesting. He had this quiet confidence in who his God was to the point that he was willing to take a risk and a gamble, even with his own life, to go after something. And so sometimes you don't need to be the person in the foreground. I mean, I mean, there's you don't ever need to be a person in the foreground. But it's it's interesting to notice that there are people, and I believe some of you are this, that you have a quiet confidence in the power, in the ability, in the faithfulness, in the love, in the you name it, of your God. This is Caleb. This is Jonathan. It may be. I, he, doesn't, he doesn't really mean, eh, maybe God will do it. He has a quiet confidence that if he puts his neck out there, God's going to come through for him. Okay, so you, you, you think about, when you think about Caleb, you think about Joshua. They were together, you know, as far as spying out the land, but Joshua was more prominent. But Caleb had this, this inner strength, this quiet tenacity for the Lord, which is just phenomenal. At 85, he's ready to take on the giants. And he says, it may be that the Lord. And it, and it says later, let me just read that. So first it talks about... Um, Caleb inherits the land, but then it says Caleb occupies it. In uh, chapter 15 of Joshua, verse 13, Now Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, gave a share among the children of... Uh, now to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, talking about Joshua, he gave a share among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord, to Joshua. Namely, Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. So Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Shishai, Ahaman and Talmai, the children of Anak. And he moves on and he offers a reward for, for, um, for moving on to conquer more land. And his daughter marries the person who, who... But anyway, that's more story. But not only was he given the land as an inheritance, he went and occupied it at 85. He climbed a mountain, climbing up a mountain, conquering giants. I mean, who does this in their old age? A man who has quiet confidence in the ability not of himself, but of his God. And that's what's amazing about men like this. And Jonathan, you think about Jonathan, you think about David. David had the spotlight, not Jonathan. 
And yet, you know, even though Jonathan saw the way his father Saul was doing poorly, he still had a quiet confidence in the ability of his God. So it's interesting, when you think about David and Jonathan, you think about David's conquests, but the thing that Jonathan did actually comes before the story of David and Goliath in the Bible. I don't know chronologically how it falls exactly, but it's interesting that Jonathan has this. Jonathan defeats the Philistines in this, in this thing where he goes with his armor bearer. They, and so, um, so he says that, right? For nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. So there's this, even the allegiance of the armor bearer to Jonathan, like, all right, I'm with you. Whatever you want to do, I'm with you. But Jonathan said, very well, let us cross over to these men. We'll show ourselves to them. If they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we'll stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, then we will go up for the Lord has delivered them into our hand and this will be a sign to us. So they have this idea, right? Jonathan has this idea. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines and the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, come up to us and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan. As it, and as he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. <laughs> Jonathan's knocking them down. And his armor bearer behind him is finishing them off. So that they can't come up behind them and get them. You know what's really interesting about these two stories? About Caleb and then about Jonathan, the son of Saul. Is that these men both were advancing up an incline taking ground. Their quiet confidence in the ability of their God and his strength gave them the victory in this case. And, and even if you are climbing up a mountain, even if, you're, if your enemies are running down towards you, even if you have to climb a mountain and fight at the same time, if your confidence is in the Lord, it may be that he will work on your behalf. I hope you guys are blessed by this message. Um, I don't even, I mean, it's just a little thought that I had on this, but there's so much there. There's so much depth to this. And, and the, the inter interesting thing about these two accounts is that uh, the Bible says in the mouth of two witnesses, two or three, a matter is established. And so there's a witness of this, that this quiet confidence, this it may be, this same phrase is used by Caleb to take the land in the hill country where the giants are. And this It May Be by Jonathan used to speak about going over and taking the Philistines. They both had to face an uphill climb and a battle that seemed impossible. But because of their quiet confidence in the ability of their God, they were able to do it. So it may be, it may be that your God will work on your behalf. Hope you're blessed today. It's good to be with you guys. Thanks for joining me on AM Live. I will see you soon.